Mice. Now Moon comes to set the screen. A clobbering screen. Mice is three is good. Another three. Ryan Mice. This is the West Portland on the Hardwood Podcast on the West Portland Sports Network. Here are your hosts, Jack Ridenow and Sean Myers. We welcome you into another edition of the Westmoreland on the Hardwood podcast here on the Westmoreland Sports Network's YouTube channel. Sean Myers, Jack Ridenauer here. Jack, first off, welcome for the first time this season. I know you're very excited to talk about some high school hoops. So uh, what have you been enjoying? What have you uh, been noticing so far about a month now into this season? Well, Sean, first off, excited to be back for season two of Westmoreland on the Hardwood. But really, I mean, hey, let's 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 face it, right? You got the early season basketball out of the way. You've got Christmas tournament out of the way. Now we're getting to the really exciting point. Section play, some really good matchups in the next few weeks, really. I mean, I think that the schedule in section play looks great in the next few weeks. So just excited for some really good marquee matchups coming up. And we're going to talk about some of the key section matchups upcoming next week. But uh, we also have plenty to get to. We have the plays of the week and our team of the week. It's the Greensburg-Salem girls who have coming off. A, speaking of holiday tournaments, they had a nice little trip down south and were very successful in Florida. So we'll discuss them further. But let's start with our starting five, our biggest takeaways from the past 10 days or so. Since this is kind of a unique uh, time of year, we're not doing our typical Sunday filming schedule. And I want to start with Greensburg Central Catholic Boys, Jack. They have got not one, not two, but three significant wins since I last talked to Dan Flickinger on this platform. GCC, a 2A school showing that they can knock off teams that are very talented and that play in larger classifications. And I think the way that they're doing it is so impressive. I mean, they won three of their last four games by 15 or more points. And Tyree Turner just continues to be a, a huge game changer. I mean, he's at 20 plus in three straight games, had 30 plus points against Sarah Catholic, reached the 1,000 point mark. So this is a, a Centurions team that comes back. They reload with a lot of guys from last year. Obviously, you also have Franco Alvarez down low in the paint to kind of clog things up and be that that dominating force on the board. So this is a really good team. I know that they've got themselves a really good matchup coming up soon against Jeanette, which I know you and I were always excited for that rivalry. So they're off to a scorching hot start. But as I always say, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. So they have to keep this moving forward. Yeah, winners of nine of their first 10 games. And we mentioned the, the most recent victories. You highlighted the win against Sarah Catholic. That's a major win on the road against the Eagles, who I think most people thought going into the season was their biggest uh, opposition and their biggest challenger for section supremacy. And then they defeated Hempfield area and they defeated Yawk. Yawk, one of the better teams in 3A. And of course, Hempfield area competing in 6A. So they continue to vi very impressive victories on their resume. And I just want to quickly highlight Franco Alvarez. If you haven't seen him yet this year, Jack, completely different looking. He's kind of uh, transformed his body. He is much more slender, quicker, maybe loses a little bit of that strength, but he's still getting it done in a big, big way certainly offensively and in the paint defensively as well. We're going to talk about the other GCC team momentarily, but I want to focus on the Norwin girls basketball team because we talk about the Centurions and their impressive victories. I don't think many victories were more impressive than Norwin's win against McKeesport. Just a complete dominant showing against a 5A powerhouse. I had to call it, man, this Norwin team, Jack, might be even better than last year's, and that's saying something for a team that made it to the state semis. Well, that's what it is, right? I think they come back with a lot of revenge on their mind. When you get that close to a state title and you fall short and you bring back pretty much the same group from last year, minus Kate Bodai, I mean, you, you're going to come back hungry and you're going to come back really wanting to be strong from the beginning. And that's what they've done. And, you know, going back to that game against McKeesport and just watching the film on it, you score seven points in the first quarter and then you wind up scoring 70 plus points in the entire game. And I think what's so interesting about them is how well they play together, right? I mean, just the chemistry that they have, and they're just they're structured so well, right? You have uh, Bailey Snowberger, who's running the show, doing a great job being the point guard that she is. 
And then Kendall Berger, who I know you mentioned during the, the, the McKee sport game, she's been kind of slow getting into the scoring, but she exploded against the Tigers there. And she's a player that can go off for 15 or more at any point. And then Lauren Palangio, she's right down low. And she, I think, is the nucleus for that team because everybody focuses on her. And then you forget about the other players. So when you've got that much depth, and I know Coach brozeski has got such a strong bench as well, that's going to really help them out down the road and, and just down the stretch of the season. One thing for them that I know in the past has been kind of maybe the one issue that they've had is just staying healthy. And I think if they can just stay healthy for the entire season, I mean, they're going to be a handful for anybody that goes up against them. Absolutely. They've been playing without Kendra Williams. The hope is that maybe she's able to return late in the season, potentially once we get into postseason play. But yeah, they have been very, very impressive, despite the fact that they dropped a heartbreaker against Kennedy Catholic at the buzzer. That's really not going to probably hurt their goals. Uh, again, this is a team that's going to be a contender and probably a favorite in all 6A. Well, when I talk about Norwin girls basketball, I always think about Greensburg Central Catholics girls because there's some tie-ins. Some of the stars for the Centurions would have played for Norwin if they stayed in the home district. And GCC's off to a great start as well. They, much like Norwin, reached the state semis last year. And one of their key components, Maya Morgan, reached a milestone. She got 1,000 points earlier this week, Jack, in an impressive victory. She has had a great career, and the Centurions have had a great start to 23-24. Yeah, and not to mention, it's kind of cool that she just reached 1,000 points, and then over for the boys, Tyree Turner just reached 1,000 points. So basketball is off to a great start for the GCC community, but she's a Cal U commit, so we'll get to see her a lot moving forward when she goes up against Seton Hill. But I read a little article that's very interesting. She's a Sabrina Ionescu fan, great score in the WNBA, and let's face it, this is a huge scoring milestone for, for Morgan for sure. Yeah, and it came against... Cannon McMillan, which is a 6A opponent. GCC is a 2A school. Centurions won that one, by the way, at Cal U, which is ironic, as you mentioned, 44-35 in favor of GCC. They've had some blowout victories against teams that are around the same size as them, so they're playing up and playing uh, not just WPIAL foes, but they've gone out of state to play some really good competition. Coach Scatell certainly testing his team, but players like Maya Morgan certainly have answered that challenge so far this year. Well, how about the Southmoreland Scotties boys basketball team? We knew they would be good. I don't think we knew they would be this good this early. They have been off to an incredible start, perfect to this point of the season. And certainly we think of uh, uh, Ty Keffer is leading the way, Jack, but this is more than just a one-man show at this point. With, with that resume and that record, it, it proves that they have a lot of talent and a lot of balance on the team. And that whole section is going to be really good this year. I mean, the matchup that I'm looking at is in a few weeks when they go up against Uniontown, who as of right now is also still undefeated. So that is going to be a fun one to watch. But it's always fun to see those teams that maybe are the under-the-radar groups that you don't think of at the beginning of the year. And then all of a sudden they burst onto the scene because... Teams, uh, opposing teams, they don't know what to do or how to go up against a team that is almost a surprise. So something for this, the Scotties team to be really excited for. But again, that matchup against Uniontown, I think that's going to be a fantastic one. Southmoreland coming off of a one point win against South Park in the Charleroi tournament to stay perfect. They've also knocked off Ringgold, East Allegheny, Mount Pleasant, York, Ligonier Valley, Greensburg, Salem. They've played a lot of Westmoreland County foes, which we always love. By the way, their head coach, uh, he was kind of busy early in the season. He was helping lead the Bell Vernon football team to a state title. Frank Musino, one of the assistants for Matt Humbert with the Leopards. So he knows what it takes to go the distance. And certainly his boys so far have been off to a great start. We're talking about all these positives. Let's end our starting five with a little bit of a downer, Jack, as Tori Stefano, an outstanding sophomore for Penn Trafford, is sidelined due to injury. Certainly looks like it could be a lengthy absence. And that could really potentially derail what has been a very promising start for Penn Trafford. However, the good news is, at least early results, they have been able to overcome her absence so far. And it's a team that, let's face it, Sean, they have been hit with injuries in the past. You look at last year, Kylie Picconi missed a lot of the season a year ago, and she was kind of seen as that other guard to help out Olivia Peppel. And I think that is something that's going to get affected, right, is, is how Olivia Peppel has to now take on an even bigger brunt of not just the offensive load, because we all know how great of a scorer she is, but she's going to have to continue to run a point. And when you don't have Tori DiStefano out there to spell her some, help her out every now and again, 
it's a lot to not just score a lot, but it's a lot to also run the offense and then be expected to score. You have a ginormous target on you for opposing defenses. But again, it's it's a really well coached team with Coach Janikas there. And again, they have they have gone through this before. When they didn't have Kylie Piconi last year, they were still able to weather the storm. And so I think that Coach Janikas, he can get his group rallied around. And when you have a player like Olivia Peppel, who's one of the top scorers in really all of the WPIAL. I mean, I think they're going to be just fine. But again, that is a big, big loss because we we talked a lot with Coach Janikas last year about Stefano's impact, and he always spoke really highly of her, not just her skill level, but her aggressiveness and her ability to play well above her age and her maturity. So you're not just losing a type of player like that, but you're losing the maturity and that varsity experience from last year. But again, they have a lot of other players that can step in and, and fill that void. Yeah, and I know at the end of last year when they made the state playoffs, she was battling through injury, kept playing, and then had to take care of that after the season. So tough for her on a personal level. The good news is they've already banked a couple of section wins, defeating Connellsville and Albert Gallatin before the Christmas break. But it's going to get hot and heavy after that because they play some really, really good teams like McKeesport, as we mentioned, Oakland Catholic as well. Well, that'll do it for our starting five, our biggest takeaways from the past week to 10 days of the WPIAL basketball season. Let's now shift to our plays of the week. And we begin with the Norwin girls as the Knights offensive execution was on full display in their win against McKeesport. And that was exemplified early in the fourth as their crisp passing led to a three by Bailey Snowberger to push their lead to above 20 points with myself and Mark Katarski on the call the move. I think it's a great for AMCC competing with the likes of Pick Greensburg and LaRoche. Oh, how oh, COVID. So maybe this. beautiful ball movement. And Snowberger <laughs> again the beneficiary. She's got nine. Boy, is that fun to watch. Great stuff there from Norwin. And whether you're a fan of the Knights or not, if you're a fan of basketball, you love seeing a play like that. Swinging it around, I think every girl touches the the ball in a span of about three seconds leads to an open three. Of course, it's all for naught if you don't knock it down. But Bailey Snowberger, not a big, prolific score. Certainly, she can fill it when she gets the opportunity. So congrats to her and congrats to the Knights. Well, speaking about three-pointers, we will continue plays of the week with the Seton Hill University men's basketball team. And it was the Griffins who trailed for most of their matchup against Mansfield last Tuesday. But it was Ryan Mice who willed Seton Hill to the comeback victory. The senior hit a pair of three-pointers in the final 80 seconds of play, sending Seton Hill into the holiday break on a high note with a 74-70 win, with myself and Roger Downs providing the commentary. And the rebound by Slaventis. Griffins can tie or take the lead. Mice for the lead. It's good. Seton Hill has the 71-70 advantage, courtesy of Ryan Mice. Mice. Now Moon comes to set the screen. A clobbering screen. Mice's three is good. Oh, another three from Ryan Mice. What a clutch possession. The screen by Moon, the three by Mice. Seton Hill up 74 to 70. Jack, I know you had a chance to see Mice uh, briefly last year with the Griffins, and he's a guy that's gotten even better now. He's clearly their leading scorer with Samuel Tabe moving on, and he's a guy that we like as well. He's really easy to talk to. Uh, always, always going to be cheering for him, and he's having a great season. And Seton Hill proving that last year was no fluke. Absolutely. I mean, hey, you, you got to think that now they're under a second-year head coach, and they have a huge win like that. I mean, listen, being down by that much with little time left, and you still find a way to... Mind you, win by four is an unbelievable point. Absolutely. That'll do it for Plays of the Week. Let's now transition to our Team of the Week. I mentioned it at the onset, the Greensburg-Salem girls, and they are off to another great start. Rick Klimchok, their head coach, has to get a lot of credit, but I'm sure he will defer to the players. They are 8-1 and one at this point, and as I mentioned, they had a lot of success down in Florida playing in the KSA pre-holiday tournament. Not a holiday tournament, a pre-holiday tournament. In Orlando, they went 3-0 and and most notably scoring a thrilling victory in their third and final game, 33-31 against Buckeye Valley, a team from Ohio. And Jack, I think that there's a lot of great options. We talked about the Southmoreland boys being perfect. 
both Greensburg Central Catholic teams, Norwin. But for me, Greensburg Salem winning a holiday tournament, and then they come back and they keep it up with an impressive win against a pretty good Brownsville team. This team is absolutely rolling. They're only lost this season overtime against a perennial powerhouse in Blackhawk. And when you go out of town with your team and you get exposure to those out-of-state teams, you really get an idea of what other basketball is played out in, in our country. And I think that that is going to be something that they can kind of gravitate towards, you know, as the season continues to move forward where, hey, we know what it's like to play against out-of-state teams. Now let's try and take something from their playbook maybe and apply it up against teams that we're going up against here in, in, in the state of Pennsylvania. And not to mention, I mean, you bring back three starters from last year, key reserve players as well. I know that they had a really good summer league. They played really well in their fall league. And when you get a group of players together for the summertime, for the fall time, and you have players that are buying into that, that are staying committed, it's going to translate over into the regular season. And, and it clearly has. I mean, Caitlin Mankins coming back this year, 15 points per game last year. She almost averaged 11 boards as well. Last year, Ashlyn Price was a double-digit scorer last year. So you bring back a lot of those same players that, you know, they had 14 wins a year ago. Obviously, they kind of fell apart maybe towards the end of the season, but then you come back, you bounce back in, a, in the right fashion, and you win, you know, eight of your first nine games. It's not too shabby. And, and not to mention, I mean, they're in a pretty tough section, right? You have teams like North Catholic that they're going to probably go toe to toe with. So it's going to be a fun season for this Golden Lions team. And again, when you bring back that much talent, that much experience at the varsity level, mind you, I mean, it's a smooth transition into the next season. Yeah. And they have some other players who have experience in Reagan Kerr and Gia Rosensteel. But a player who has, I think, really emerged early is Blessing Gant. And she was actually named the MVP of that pre-holiday tournament. She was the one who scored the buzzer beater to win against Buckeye Valley. And she's got some good size. She's just a junior. So this is a really good mix. And again, their head coach, very accomplished. Rick Klimchok's done it all. And he actually helps his son coaching at Pitt Greensburg for the men's team there. But you mentioned what's on the horizon. They're going to play North Catholic next Thursday. They also play Valley on Tuesday. That's certainly a game that they're they're going to win in all likelihood. But you really think now, with this momentum, this is probably the right time for them to really think that they can challenge North Catholic, even though that's going to be at North Catholic and Elena Rock, who's such a great player. Confidence really means a lot, and I think that this is the most confident that we're going to see Greensburg-Salem. Without a doubt, and I think that they're, they're thriving off the confidence from their defense. I mean, they're allowing the fewest points per game right now in Section 14A, not even allowing 30 points a game. Not too shabby, and especially in you know a 32-minute basketball game. So this is a, a team, like you said, that if, if they're going to put it together this year, this is the perfect time to do it because they've got the personnel, they've got the coach. Everything is, is all the boxes are checked, right? Now it's a matter of applying that and continuing to carry that throughout the rest of the section play. And obviously North Catholic will be probably that, that marquee matchup that they have, but let's face it, right? I mean, teams like Highlands and Dairy area, they can also make some noise as well. So Greensburg Salem, it's not going to be an easy road, but the way that they've been playing as of lately, they're making it look a lot easier than it is. Real quick question for you, Jack. They were down, as I mentioned, in Orlando. They took it in an NBA game to see the Magic. I don't remember who they played. Maybe the Heat. Give me a, a quick bullet point on the Orlando Magic as an NBA enthusiast like you are. Well, they've got the Wagner brothers, Mo and Franz, and 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 Franz has been playing unbelievable, almost 20 points per game. Mo Wagner, also a nice piece. I mean, the Magic, they might make some noise towards the end of the season, my friend. You didn't even mention their best player out of Duke. Come on, He's you me. don't know? I'm, Paolo I'm, Banchero. Of course. Of course. Well, they've got him. And I mean, hey, listen, it's a, it's a good team. And, and not Cole to mention Anthony? Cole Anthony. Hey, when you've got Cole Anthony on your team scoring the way that he scores, not too shabby. Okay. This isn't an NBA podcast. It's okay. We'll talk more about Westmoreland County teams. I just wanted to get your, your quick NBA uh, opinion there. So we talk about Greensburg Salem and their matchup coming ahead. Let's look at the matchups upcoming this week, and there's, again, a lot of key section matchups now that the teams are kind of putting the non-section behind them. We'll start on the boys' side and begin on Tuesday. And again, keep in mind that Monday is the holiday, so it's going to be very heavy for both boys and girls on Tuesday and even into Wednesday. Tuesday, a game that we will have the broadcast coverage of Penn Trafford at Franklin Regional in a matchup in Class 5A between the Warriors and the Panthers, both those teams off to good start. Certainly Franklin Regional playing at a very high level. 
Kiski area at Greater Latrobe in that same section as well. The Cavaliers boys were our team of the week in our first show this season. Wednesday, Southmoreland will look to stay perfect as the Scotties will go to play at Bel Vernon, a very difficult environment there, although Quentin Martin not playing this year for the Leopards, but Zion Moore still a terrific player. And Derry area at Burl, the Buccaneers off to an incredible start under Coach Fantuzo. They seem to be legit, but they will have their hands full against the Trojans. Listen to this slate on Friday, Jack. Some really, really good ones. Franklin Regional at Kiski area. Again, that same section in 5A that we highlight. Bell Vernon area at Uniontown. You mentioned that the Red Raiders have been terrific this season. Elizabeth forward at Southmoreland. The Scotties, we just talked about how great they are. EF is a solid team as well. Valley at Ligonier. That is a Westmoreland County battle. And then the one that we always talk about, Greensburg Central Catholic at Jeanette. Two teams that are off to good starts. They both have section victories against Sarah Catholic. Throw out the record book when it's Centurions and Jayhawks. Always some intriguing storylines in that matchup. On the girls' side, Norwin at North Allegheny. This could be the matchup that potentially is uh, played down at the peak for the championship in early March. But for now, it's just a crucial regular season section matchup. Keep in mind, last year, it was North Allegheny who beat Norwin in the WPIAL semifinals. But then Norwin got vengeance, eliminating NA in the state quarterfinals. Also on Tuesday, Valley at Greensburg-Salem. Thursday's action, Greensburg-Salem at North Catholic that we talked about. Bell Vernon at Southmoreland. Burrow at Shadyside Academy. The Buccaneers girls, much like the boys, off to an outstanding start. Greensburg Central Catholic at Sarah Catholic. That also might be a championship preview in 2A. Franklin Regional at Kiski area on Friday. GCC at North Catholic non-section on Saturday. And then a couple of college matchups that we will have coverage of on WSN Wednesday, Millersville at Seton Hill. That is PSAC cross-divisional play. And then the opener for the PSAC West for the Griffins on Saturday as they welcome Slippery Rock again. Another game that we will have coverage of. That's both for the men's and women's. They play double headers in the PSAC. Packed schedule, certainly, Jack. What stands out for you? Well, I mean, GCC and Jeanette. I mean, I remember in my first experience of that game last year and just how loud that GCC gym was. That was probably one of the loudest high school games that I can remember being a part of in a very long time. And that always makes it so much more fun when they have that added atmosphere. But PT and Franklin Regional for the boys, I mean, I think that's going to be a really fun one, especially how Penn Trafford has won some really close ball games. I mean, I think they won their first handful of games by less than three or four points. Franklin Regional off to a lightning hot start as well. So you've got some really good matchups there. And then obviously over on the girls' side, like you said, Norwin and North Allegheny. I mean, let's... That's a preview for a championship potentially. And let's face it, I think both of those teams are going into that matchup saying this is not just the first of, of two meetings we'll have. This is probably the first of three meetings that we'll have. So I expect that that one's going to be an exciting one. But as they get into their second matchup and presumably when they play the third time in the playoffs, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of wrinkles that they throw into their offense. But then obviously the college side is, of things as well. I mean, Seton Hill, boys and girls or men's and women's off to great starts. And obviously the men's have a lot to, to try and build off of on their exciting win uh, earlier this season against Mansfield. So a lot of really good stuff. And again, we're getting it at the beginning of January. So I can only imagine what the end of January and the beginning of February is going to look like. Yeah, already some really crucial matchups, certainly as section play, as we mentioned, uh, gets ratcheted up once we head out of the holiday break. Well, Jack, that's going to do it for this edition of the Westmoreland on the Hardwood podcast. Of course, you can check us out each and every week. We'll try to get back to a more traditional Saturday, Sunday schedule, uh, hopefully uh, after the first week of January and keep on bringing this out each and every week all throughout the regular season. But for now, we'll put a bow on this one for my colleague Jack Wright and our Sean Myers saying thank you so much for tuning in. Check us out again each and every week on YouTube and on the Westmoreland Sports website. It's the Westmoreland on a Hardwood podcast right here on WSN. This is the Westmoreland on the Hardwood podcast on the Westmoreland Sports Network.